When it comes to some of the best items in gaming, all that glitters is not gold. No wonder some gamers have trust issues because with certain great items comes a deep, dark curse. Some are worse than others and some seem kind of fair for the amount of power you get out of the weapon, but a curse is a curse at the end of the day and that can never be good. So I'm Amy from What Culture, and here are 10 amazing video game items that actually curse you. 10. The Cursed Shield Final Fantasy VI When you first encounter the shield, it is one of the worst bits of kit in the game. Not only does it penalize the holder by dropping your strength, speed, stamina, and magic by 7 points, it offers no protective boosts and subjects the user to several status debuffs like Doom, Silence, and Berserk. On top of all of that, it also makes the player weak to fire, ice, lightning, poison, earth, and water. In other words, pretty much every element in the game. So you're likely asking yourself, why the hell would I bother with this? Well, you'd bother because if you can manage 256 battles carrying this cursed shield, it becomes the Paladin's Shield, generally considered one of the best, if not the best, shield in the game. The Paladin's Shield carries high stats for both defense and evasion. In addition to this, it acts in the exact opposite fashion from the Cursed Shield, absorbing fire, ice, lightning, and holy damage, as well as nullifying poison, wind, earth, and water damage. If you're willing to tough it out through the curse phase, then you can wind up with a great reward for doing so. 9. Devilbringer Devil May Cry 4 and 5 not every cursed item is actually an item per se, something that you can pick up. Sometimes curses can be part of the player character, something that they just have to learn to live with. DMC anti-hero Nero's demonic arm, Devilbringer, fits this description quite well. Although it's never been explained exactly how Nero got his cursed arm, at the beginning of DMC4 it's clearly something that he takes great pains to conceal. Not pleased to be sporting a large blue and red glowing hand that reflects aspects of Nero's character that even he seems to not understand. The trade-off is that Devilbringer is an incredibly durable and powerful tool, allowing Nero to summon a ghostly blue arm that can lift, throw, and pull objects much larger than himself. The Devilbringer can also absorb powers from other magical items found during gameplay, creating an extremely versatile and valuable weapon by the end of the game. 8. The Kill Star Far Cry 3 Blood Dragon The Kill Star is basically an artillery weapon strapped to your wrist. As the game explains it, the Kill Star feeds the bio-amplitude levels of the human body into reaching pitch resonance polarity. That makes sense? Probably not. Ultimately, the science doesn't matter, because what the Kill Star gives you is a massive laser beam that's super accurate, has great range, and is capable of quickly killing even blood dragons with just the unfortunate side effect of draining your health whilst you fire it. If your health gets too low, you don't die, but you do lose the use of the super weapon until you rebuild it. Clearly, the developers had a blast with this. The weapon combines the pseudo-mystical stories of ninja movies with the chrome and neon look of what everyone in the 80s thought the future would be like. Combine that with the dry, snarky one-liners and the fact that you're riding a neon green armored dragon into the final battle and you are in for a treat. 7. Bane Borderlands 2 the Bane is clearly one of those little jokes that game developers love to play on us. While immensely powerful, doing more damage than almost any submachine gun in the game, it has a few side effects that make most people think twice before equipping it. The Bane lowers your accuracy and recoil reduction, and has the added feature of making you move as fast as you probably would if trying to wade through waist-high maple syrup. But that's not even the true hindrance, oh no. The true curse of the Bane is that it does not shut up. Ever. Even if you set the in-game sound to volume zero, every time you perform an action with the weapon, it lets you know about it. Switching for another gun, Bane screams in a high-pitched voice provided by Ashley Birch, Woman! Woman! Throwing in a new mag, oh, you'll get a loud And of course, when you fire the Bane, you'll hear a cacophony of screaming that is actually saying yeah over and over, but sounds more like a couple of hundred demons fighting over the one doorway out of hell. Even the game knows how off-putting all of this is, because the subtitles simply mark this firing as annoying sound. And that is truth in advertising. 6. The Biochip – Cyberpunk 2077 The world of Cyberpunk 2077 is rich and full, giving you one of the most remarkable simulations of living another life that gaming has ever offered. Fittingly, part of that game's world concerns the technology to literally give the privilege the chance to inhabit another body. The biochip, also known as the Relic, is cutting-edge tech that allows for the copying of a person's mind onto a memory chip. Relic 1.0 allowed for people to interact with the consciousness of their loved ones after death, and was a great success amongst the wealthy general public. 
So Relic 2.0 went a step further. After the person who provided the copied mind died, they could, in theory, be restored to life in a new body via this chip. Effectively, they created immortality, which can actually truly never be a good thing. Testing of 2.0 started showing flaws. New bodies receiving implanted biochips became emotionally unstable. It was found that the chip couldn't be implanted into individuals who were close to death, which negated the whole point of downloading a person's up-to-date mind in the first place. If that wasn't bad enough, the chip was found to begin expanding inside the host body, eventually taking over the motor and psychological functions, so, you know, that's not really an ideal resurrection for Grammy. As Arasaka says in its own advertising for the relic, results may vary. 5. The Artifact Doom 3 Doom is another long-running franchise that's created a fascinating canon of weapons, armor, and artifacts. One of the most unique is simply called the Artifact. It appears to be a heart, or at least it's shaped like one, sporting a handle so that Doomguy can wield it. It's clearly not of human design, and throughout the Resurrection of Evil DLC pack, you learn more and more about it, finally discovering that it's not only a weapon, but a dimensional galaxy between hell and our world. Unpleasantly, the artifact is powered by human souls. As needed, it absorbs souls from the many deceased employees lying around the complex. Although you find the artifact at the beginning of the game, it's no use until you defeat the first main boss, the Helltime Hunter. But once you do, look out. After beating the first hunter, the artifact absorbs its Helltime power, giving Doomguy the power to move so quickly that enemies appear to be standing still. Subsequently, beating the Berserk and Invulnerability Hunters adds those powers to the artifact, making Doomguy into an unstoppable juggernaut when it's activated. There is also the unpleasant drawback of having your vision and hearing impaired by demonic energy use, but being able to rip a Hell Knight in two seems like a fair trade-off. 4. Soul Edge Soul Series Soul Edge is an iconic weapon from the Soul series of fighting games. Starting life as an ordinary sword, it slowly morphed into a demonic weapon after drawing blood and being wielded in hatred for its entire life. It now sports a polished blood-red blade and an animated eye, giving it a creepy Lovecraftian look. Well, given what it does to the user, that's quite appropriate. For most people that pick up the sword, they quickly find that the tremendous power and damage the Soul Edge gives is offset by the fact that it constantly drains your health. Logically, the sword also lets you regain health proportionate to the damage you inflict during combat. So, the more you hurt others, the less you hurt yourself. The sword drastically changes the gameplay style, necessitating that the player constantly be attacking in order to keep their health up. The weapon does have some other unpleasant side effects. In the Souls canon, the sword can take possession of bodies to bring out a darker, more violent side, it can animate the dead, and it changes shape depending on who wields it. An outstanding piece of armament, yes, but as long as you use Soul Edge, it is inexorably killing you, hatred filling its all-seeing eye. 3. The Ebony Blade Skyrim Skyrim's Ebony Blade is an ideal example of beauty being deceiving. The shiny black two-handed sword hides a dark secret behind its aesthetics. The blade previously belonged to a dark diadric goddess called Mephala. As a result, the weapon thrives on treachery and death. Whilst the player has the sword, for every two friendly characters you kill with it, the weapon's absorb health enchantment is reinforced, starting at 10 and topping out at 30. Well, you may be saying, this one's easy, just don't kill any friendlies. The problem with that is that this is otherwise a fantastic weapon. Although it's a two-handed weapon, it swings just about as fast as any one-handed one, and although it has a low damage per hit, the quicker attack speed makes up for this. Oh, and did we mention the absorb health effect has unlimited charges? That's right, once you level the sword up, you'll be taking another 30 health off with each strike, at just about the same speed as with a one-handed weapon. The cost of this sword is, of course, a moral one. Is the Dragonborn's overall mission and life more important than the lives of the friendly characters you have to kill to maximize the sword's usefulness? It's up to you to decide whether the ends justify the means. 2. One-Hit Obliterator Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild Another example of a super-powerful weapon whose impact on your character outweighs the benefits, the One-Hit Obliterator is a unique weapon designed to assist Link through one specific mission, the Divine Beast Tamer's Trial. This is probably for the best, as the act of carrying the obliterator just about kills you. The one hit is an unbreakable weapon that can, as its name implies, take out any enemy in a single blow. However, at the same time, it also renders Link vulnerable to the same one hit defeat. You can use it twice before the power of the weapon runs out and it needs a few seconds to recharge, and whilst it's recharging, it basically becomes a stick with an attack strength of one. Annoyingly, if you continue swinging it in this time, the recharge cycle won't begin. 
Basically, you either have to stand still and hope you're hidden, or dodge around enemies until the Obliterator is good to go again. Whilst the Obliterator is in Link's inventory, you can't switch to another melee weapon. You also drop to a quarter of a heart's worth of health, and you can't heal through either materials or food. When the trial is finished, the magic of the Obliterator splits up into four different orbs, and the weapon itself returns to the shrine, its work complete. And maybe a part of you will be glad to be rid of it by then. 1. The Skull of Mundane, Ultima 4 The Ultima series is legendary in the world of RPGs. During its decades of existence, it's only natural that cursed objects have found their way into the game's canon. The one we'll discuss here is the Skull of Mundane. The skull is purely evil. Previously the head of the sorcerer Mundane, it now contains all of the evil that he perpetrated during his life, making it an extremely potent weapon. Oversized and sporting long, sharp incisors, the skull needs to be retrieved from deep underwater in an area between three volcanoes and can only be recovered during a new moon. If the skull is used in an area where there are other living things, they all instantly are destroyed. So if you use it during battle, all the enemies on screen perish, but that also means that if you use it in a town, it will kill all the residents, and consequently potentially break the game if you kill any characters essential to the story. So yeah, safe to say it's not a precise weapon, but god, it is a powerful one. So where's the curse, you ask? The curse is, in fact, that if you do use the skull, you lose virtually all the things that make you an avatar. Justice, honor, spirituality, and humility, all based on the premise that you couldn't resist the temptation despite being warned to use such a terrible weapon. Hey, it reminds you that evil has its price. And with that, we've reached the end of this list of 10 amazing video game items that actually curse you. If you know of any more, please let us know in the comments down below what would you have put on this list. And in the meantime, remember to check out whatculture.com for more lists and articles like this every single day. As always, I've been Amy from WhatCulture, and I'll catch you next time.